as I go to start. Okay. Um, we called our game Wingo. I think probably we made things slightly difficult for ourselves in the beginning because we were both thinking that our, our biggest situation was likely to be in a lecture theatre and therefore we'd potentially got quite a lot of students um, that we would like to engage and um, that was what we were looking to do. We thought then that we would look at keywords and think how can we get students to think about keywords and think about how to um, do that for the best. So this is about Wingo. We decided it was suitable for minimum of three people, three people upwards. Um, we decided it could be played by individuals or in groups and groups we thought of perhaps up to six people um, but that's probably um, negotiable really. Um, equipment that we'd need, each player would need to be able to see a screen or a picture. It could be printed pictures um, but obviously we thought we would be doing it on a screen. Um, what would they need? Each player or group would need to have a paper and pen and we said a wingo grid. Now when we did this to start with we were thinking three squares by two squares so that they could write different keywords in the squares. And the object of the game, yes, is to encourage students to think about keywords as a tool to retrieve items. Are you okay on that? So basically, um, what we do first of all is um, we would explain what, what we mean by um, a keyword um, and why they're important to students. Then we'd explain about the game, that it's similar to bingo. We'd um, show them an example of the, the bingo or the wingo um, grid. Um, and then we would display um, a picture and we would ask them to then um, write down the keywords in their groups um, that they thought would describe that picture so that we would be able to retrieve it um, at a later date. So they would put a keyword in each of the, um, the grids. Then we'd have um, a pre-defined um, list of keywords um, that the instructor would use um, they would then um, call out the keywords and um, if it matched what the student had on their um, grid, they would mark it off. As soon as they've got six, um, they would shout, Wingo! And um, <laughs> they would win the game. Um, we tried it out and from the feedback we thought perhaps having six was maybe too many, so we might go down to just having four keywords just to try and speed it up a little bit. And also um, whether using an image is the right thing or whether to perhaps use um, a, an example essay title possibly um, or maybe even a combination of the two. Use an image to kind of get across the concepts and say, okay, how would we put this into, into practice and contextualise it a little bit more. It's still a work in progress. Very work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions or comments? Anybody? I'd like to say it's really brave to try and do one to suit a lecture theatre. Because it's really easy to do small groups, isn't it? But it's so hard when you might have 300 people the in a room. logistics of everything, you know, yeah. you know, we didn't want to have people having to move around and mm. um, mm. getting over that problem of people not wanting to actually say anything in a lecture theatre and actually all they've got to say is wingo. Mm. <laughs>